Our next type of energy is mechanical energy. And the good news is it's not really new. Mechanical energy just means the sum of kinetic and potential. And here we just mean the two potentials that we have defined, the gravitational potential and the spring potential. So we'll write this um, E mech for mechanical energy is K plus U. And then later we'll break U into US plus UG. So there's really not much to say. We've already defined potential energy. We've already defined kinetic energy. So we're really going to jump in to really probably one of the biggest, most important ideas in all of physics. And we're just kind of doing an intro version just for mechanical energy. But let's go ahead and write it out. So we're going to say within, and that's important, an isolated system. And we'll be saying more about what that means as we go along. Within an isolated system, E mech, the mechanical energy, is conserved. Okay. And to say it is conserved is just a fancy way for physicists to say that it's constant. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down, that it can't change. So what this means then is not only does the mechanical energy equal the kinetic plus the potential, but that sum has to stay constant within an isolated system. If nothing outside the system comes in and mixes things up, okay? The best way to show you this and to include all the terms we've talked about is to get our track and to put it up at an angle and then to have a spring here on the back for how to bump into. However, friction becomes a real problem. If we really want to illustrate this well, we need to get rid of friction. So this one I am going to do on an air track. Right? So this air track has air blowing up and allows the slider to go nice and smooth with very little friction slowing it down. So the slider is the mass. And as I push it up the track, it's gaining potential, gravitational potential, losing kinetic, and now it's gaining kinetic and losing gravitational potential. Okay? Kinetic's going down, potential's high, now potential's going down, now kinetic's high. So there's a balance between those two. Okay, but now here at this end, we have a spring. So when it comes to the end, it can push on the spring. You can see there the natural length of the spring. And when it hits it, it can compress the spring. So we can also have um, spring potential, uh, elastic potential energy when we compress the spring. And when we release it, that elastic potential can do work and convert to kinetic. So there you go, you see we pushed it up. And if you want, you can give it some initial elastic energy and watch it go up, all potential, all elastic, all potential, all elastic, all potential, and in between, it's kinetic. So you can see the energy go between all of these. So let's write them all out. So in this case, we're breaking it down into all three is K plus uh, U gravitational plus U spring. And you can actually see all the conversions happening at the same time in this demo. And in all cases, it's work. Remember, work is not a property of the mass. Work is the mechanism by which it converts its energy between gravitational potential, spring elastic potential, and um, kinetic. And the other key is, due to conservation, um, it's constant at all times. There you go. Now, how do we use this information? So one way we use it at this stage in our lives is it can make solving problems easier. You could solve everything about that motion with kinematics and forces as we did before, because you know the force, you know the gravitational force, you know how to take the sine theta, and you know the force to the spring, although it's going to vary with position, that might be tricky. You could do all the kinematics. But one powerful thing about conservation of energy is that some problems are easier to do when you think in terms of energy. So for example, let's say how much energy um, does it have? How much U mechanical does this thing have? Say I get it going on one of these little bouncy paths here, and it's going up and down, up and down, 
converting its energy between different types. And you can say, well, how much energy is it? Okay. Well, one way to figure it out is to pick a specific point where some of these are zero. Right? So let's say E mechanical equals kinetic. Well, let's pick the point where it has compressed the spring all the way. So it has no kinetic energy because it stops right, right at that place. It's a turning point and it's not moving. Velocity is zero, kinetic zero. Let's define that as a zero for gravitational potential. It's convenient, right? We'll call that zero, even though zero could be much lower. And uh, what that'll give us is zero for kinetic, zero for gravitational potential. And then all we're left with is the spring, right? So then it's one half K and what I'll just call again delta X squared. The spring constant times delta x, and here delta x is how much we compress the spring. So we just measured from here to here, 1 half k times that delta x squared, that's how much energy it has. When we're watching it do that, we could just sit here and try to watch and measure how much it's compressing the spring. And then once you have that number, you can actually solve for almost any other case. You could say, um, how high does it go? You can predict how high it's going to go without even measuring it. Because once you know emec, you can say, okay, this thing that's e mechanical is 1 half k times the delta x. I'm going to call it delta x max because it's really the maximum um, compression of the spring squared. That's now the total energy we know. So now you pick another time that's convenient. You say, well, what's the highest it goes? Well, when it's the highest it goes, it's now gone all the way up and it's compressing the spring and gravity here. I just stopped it at the highest point. At the highest point, the spring potential is zero. It's not pushing on the spring. Um, it's not moving. When it turns around to drop back, the velocity is zero. Now it's all gravitational potential. So what we could do is say that must be equal to mg, well, let's put the zeros in. Let's do it in the right order. K zero plus mg and I'm just going to call it delta y and not think about the, the angle and the cosine and the sine and all that. Let's just call it mg delta y plus the spring is zero. So you could figure out how high it goes if you had calculated the energy from how much it compresses the spring. And you can go even further. You could say how, if I get it in this motion and say I've measured how much it's compressing the spring or I've measured how high it's getting, I know the total energy, you could say how fast is it moving when it leaves the spring? Right? How fast is it going right when it leaves the spring? Well, you could take that total energy here, and you could say that's equal to k that you're looking for, because that would tell you how fast it's going. Gravity, you just have to figure out, well, when it moves delta x max, how much uh, gravitational potential did it, did it gain? How much the original energy did it give up to this? And this would be zero, because when it leaves the spring, it's not compressing the spring. So you just have to take this total energy, subtract off a little bit of gravitational potential, and the rest would be all kinetic. And then you can solve for the velocity. So you can see energy in certain kinds of problems is a very powerful shortcut to not having to do all the detailed um, uh, kinematics.